you do not need a lot of money to be financially stable and here's why so you make one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year and you're broke and that's okay well i mean you know we live how we're living now as far as not a big savings and that type of thing and yeah, I that's to, what i mean you know, you're broke numbers. yes sir you look good on the outside but when we look behind the door there's nothing there i don't want y'all to sleep on that what dave ramsey said is a trap that a lot of people fall into so uncle dave there had a good point how much money you make becomes irrelevant when you start making expensive decisions that completely eradicate the amount of money that you make per year so most of y'all who watch my videos and watch my channel y'all want to get to a place where you're financially stable and feel like you're well off like you're comfortable you can make certain decisions you can go on certain vacations because you know all your other finances are in order you have your savings your emergency fund your debt paid off or paid down at least like you know you're moving in the right direction that's how a lot of y'all want to feel and a lot of y'all probably have already gotten there too so congratulations to y'all shout out to y'all but you're still wanting to move forward and make more happen and a trap that we all fall into and something that i really fell into was when i first got out of college and first moved out and all this lovely good stuff working a full-time job i started looking around i was 21 at the time and i was looking at people who were 28 or 30 or 35 and i'm like man they got it going on they got the nice car they got the bmw they got the range rovers they got the Corvettes going on. Like, what am I doing wrong <laughs> type of thing, you know? Or I would look to my left and be like, man, this person just got themselves a house. This person and him and his wife just got a house. And it looks almost like a mansion. And, and don't even get me started on like certain clothes and certain brands that people are wearing. Like, you get what I'm saying? The, the, the overall assumption when you see those things is, man, they got money. They got it going on. They got it made. The thing about wealth is it's completely invisible. You don't see what's going on in somebody else's bank account. Unless you got somebody that's like me on YouTube showing and broadcasting the amount of money they got in each account and all that good stuff. That's about the closest you're going to get to seeing what somebody's wealth looks like. But most people are going to keep that hush hush because frankly, it's really nobody's business. And I respect that. But the thing is, the price tag doesn't mean that they're building wealth. And the salary they have doesn't mean that they're building wealth. And so I was looking at all those things and I was really comparing myself like I was doing something wrong or like I needed to step my game up when really I was in the right place at the right time as it was. And I needed to just keep going. I just needed to keep saving and building and tracking my expenses. And that's why I built things like my net worth tracker and my savings goal tracker. You can download it right now for 100% free. But at the time, I had no idea. And so one day I walked into this grocery store in North Carolina called Food Lion. And in there, there was an ATM. And I just went in there real quick to grab some money to just go get myself a haircut because they actually do really good haircuts out there. But anyway, I couldn't help but notice somebody left their receipt in there and it said $10,000 and something. It was like maybe $10,700 or something like that. And I was like, man, me, I just got to a thousand in my savings account. So I'm like, man, how'd they save all this? And I just started feeling like the amount of money I was making at work was just moving really slow. And you're going to feel like that when you compare yourself to others and you start to feel like you're just so behind. But they say hindsight is 2020. And so in retrospect, when I look back at everything and I look at my net worth videos and I look at just my overall net worth sent from 2017 till now, which I just made a video about last video. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. But when I look at it, it really doesn't take much. Even if you just put $100 a month, $50 a month, however much you can give to yourself a month, whether it's in your savings or whether it's in your 401k or whatever the case is, just a little bit. Just a little bit counts so much and you don't always notice it right away because it's a slow build and it's a slow burn like everything in life. If you think about working out, right, when you build muscle, it doesn't just get developed in a day or a few months. Like it takes it genuinely takes years to build a solid body of muscle mass where your muscles are strong and flexible and capable and athletic. And your personal finances aren't that different. Like you have to build yourself. You have to build your character to have the maturity to do certain things like go to work, build yourself up in your career, continue to earn money. And even if you're a business owner or whatever the case is, however you make money, you have to build those things to make other people want to pay you money. 
and grow your value in the world. And when you do things like that, your money starts to grow. So it's going to take years and years and years for you to develop yourself and to develop your money. Just like it takes years for you to develop your muscles and your strength and your stamina and all that good stuff. So it's the same exact thing. And I didn't realize it, but back when I worked at my previous job, I was only putting 4% of my paychecks in there. And if you compare it to my salary, that's only like $100 per paycheck that I was putting into my 401k. Now I did get some overtime along the way. So it was still 4% of whatever the total amount was. But my point is $100 every couple of weeks isn't that much. You probably spend that much on food every week, not every other week, but every week you probably spend that on food. And that's because we have to eat. And so when you look at it that way, every little bit counts. And money in a 401k or money in an investment account, it's going to compound. Same thing for your savings, same thing for your emergency fund. And hopefully you have your emergency fund in a high yield savings account. If you don't, I have my Marcus by Goldman Sachs link down below. If you go ahead and click through there and you set up an account from that link, you'll get some perks from signing up through me. But when it came to saving, if you save a few hundred dollars a month, you're going to have a few thousand by the end of the year. And if you get a promotion or a raise, you can just save the difference. You could live off of what you make right now and save and invest the difference. And that's fairly common financial advice from a few years ago that a lot of people sleep on. Like seriously, if you go from $50,000 a year to $60,000 a year and your expenses haven't gone up drastically, you could literally live off of that $50,000 a year and with that extra $10,000, this is just an example, I'm not including taxes in this example, but with that extra $10,000, you could have fun with some of it, yeah. Take $2,000 out or $3,000 out for yourself, whatever. But the rest of it, you can save and invest the difference. So $3,000 goes to you and for fun and for vacations, boom, there you go. Now the other $7,000, 3000 could go toward savings, 4000 go toward investing, however you want to split it up. Just an example, but it's the little bit that counts throughout the way. And so if you do that, of course you wouldn't do the 10000 at once, but you would split that out over the 12 months. And so 10000 divided by 12, I have to do math on my calculator, that's 833 extra a month. So that's $416 every two weeks. And a lot of people, when they get raises like that, they're like, oh, man, I'm making all this money. I can do this. Now I can do this. I encourage you to really sit down and track what you have going on. Track your budget. Track your net worth. Track your savings goals. And again, there's links for those in the description. But you need to get a grip on what you really have because $10,000 seems like a lot at a time, but this is going to be spread out over 12 months. So $416 per paycheck extra, you got to think about what you're going to do with it. So in this case, it might look like putting 150 in your savings account, putting 200 in your investing account, and then the rest goes toward fun. That's how you would pretty much portion that out. But if you just see the 400, it doesn't seem like as much, but as you divide that up and as you disperse it properly, you'll see that your money is well spent and your money grows and every little bit counts. Watch my video where I show you how I started from 2017 where I had a negative net worth. My net worth was negative $29,928. But every little bit I did, it counted and it worked. And it hasn't even been a decade since then. And my net worth is already well into the 100,000. And my goal by the end of this year is to get to 200,000. But in between there, every little bit counts. You can't underestimate what you can do in a few years by overestimating what you can do in a few days or a few months. That's a big mistake a lot of people make. So the first thing I would say is, of course, don't compare yourself to others because you really don't know the story that they went through to get there. A lot of us look at people who are doing better than us or who are doing well in general and feel like, oh, well, they, they had it easy. They didn't have to go through what I had to go through. Of course they didn't. We all go through different routes of life, but that doesn't mean their life went without struggle. And it doesn't mean that their life is any easier than yours. I feel like when people say stuff like that, that's just like a, a coping mechanism. Why can't we just be happy when other people are doing well and ask them questions that are relevant that can maybe help you along in your journey? That's the reason why I made this channel and why I made my Wealth Journey episodes is because I want to show what the whole journey was looking like because it wasn't all butterflies and rainbows and ice cream cone. It was hard work, lots of sweat and a little bit of blood, figuratively speaking, of course. But it's like that sometimes. We're adults, and this is what adults have to deal with. 
And I want to also touch on debt. When it comes to debt, every little bit counts. It doesn't take much to be financially stable. It just takes a little bit, just a little bit at a time. So, of course, you have your minimum payments when it comes to debt. But the smartest way to pay off debt is not the snowball method. I know a lot of people feel mentally better and they feel like they're making progress. Look, mathematics is more important to me than like feelings when it comes to paying off something. Like I don't care. Like I might feel terrible when I'm paying something off, but if I know I'm doing it quicker than I would if I was doing it using the snowball method or something, I'm I'm choosing the one that's getting rid of the debt faster, not how I feel in the in the meantime. But that's just my opinion. You could use either method, but I will say that the avalanche method is significantly faster and you'll save a lot more money doing it. But you might be the type of person that feels like you need to feel like you're making progress to keep going. And in that case, it's better to do it that way because that's going to be the thing that keeps you going. And the whole thing about this video, the whole point of this video is to make sure that you keep going and knowing that every little bit counts. But uh, just to give you a quick breakdown, the snowball method is when you pay the minimum payment of your debt, whether it's student loans or whatever the case may be, you pay the minimum payment like you do every single month, but then then you put extra money towards the lowest amount that you owe. So if you have student loans, let's say it's $50 for one loan, $2,000 for another loan, and $100 for another loan, you'll pay the minimum payment and then you'll put money towards the $50 that's left on one of the loans. You get what I'm saying until it's gone. Then you go to the next biggest one, which might be you know $5,000 or something like that. But the avalanche method is when you pay the minimum payment, but then you put most of your extra money towards the highest interest that you owe. And that could be on the lowest amount of debt that you owe or whatever the case may be. But it's smarter to do it that way because the interest at the end of the day is what eats us all alive. And if you have a low interest rate, you can just kind of pace yourself with it. You don't have to be in a race. But if you have like credit card debt or something like that, that's when... You want to start paying it off, but every little bit counts. You got to make sure that you understand this in order to be financially stable. That's probably the number one thing you have to understand in order to be financially stable and remain financially stable because that's going to keep you going. You just have to keep going, keep going to work, keep paying down your debt, keep saving your money, keep investing in your 401k, keep investing in your Roth IRA, uh, start learning about how to invest and then eventually open up an investing account and keep investing in there after you've learned about some secure investments, which I could help you with on this channel. I actually do have an investing course as well, but there's a lot of things that go into it and a lot of things have to go right. But the main thing that has to go right is you being consistent and you putting money towards things. So if you have debt, consistently put money toward debt and little by little and when you have extra money you can put more in there but it's that little bit it's the little bit that compounds the quickness in which you're able to knock your debt away and the quickness in which you're able to build your savings and the quickness in which you're able to build your investments that's why it's so important so of course a lot of this video is my opinion and, and it's largely based on my experience and, and it's based a lot on the information that I put in my book based off my other experiences and things but the most important thing is that you do something consistently when you get inconsistent that's when your money starts to get a little funky and a little cyclical and one thing about money and me is I like it to be about consistent so Let's be consistent with saving, investing, and paying off debt, and you will be financially stable in no time, and it doesn't take nearly as long as you think. It might feel like it's taking forever, but that's why you can't overestimate what you can do today and tomorrow and underestimate what you can do in a couple of years because my net worth went from like $50,000 to 90 something thousand dollars within a year. And it went from 90 something thousand dollars to $131,000 in another year. So you never know what might happen and you never know what things you might learn today that can help you significantly two, three, four, five years from now. It's completely incredible, but it can happen for you. But I just wanted to share that message with you because I've been thinking about it. It's been on my mind for a while and I know y'all want to be financially stable. So this is my message to you. But anyway, that is a video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. I will see you in the next video.